Whack play continues to roll on for the Lopes. We take a look back at the recent road trip. Mikey Dixon sits down with Lopes insider Paul Coro as he talks about his journey to GCU. Soccer coach Shellis Heinemann discusses his recent Hall of Fame induction, and we look ahead to the upcoming home slate. It's all coming up right now on The Dan Marley Show. Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show, presented by Talking Stick Resort. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of your GCU Lopes, Dan Marley, coming back. A little bit different than last time we talked. You're coming back two and two, two big road wins. You got to be feeling great. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, you know, we went on a mission to, to win two games, um, went to Chicago State. I thought the first half we played exceptionally well. Uh, got up 20, kind of let down our guard a little bit, but uh, very happy with that win. And then uh, after the episode of the travels that we had and finally getting to UMKC, uh, playing a team that was very desperate and a good team that plays extremely hard, uh, couldn't be happier with the way our guys performed. First half at Chicago State, you had to be really happy. You shot, they shot in the high 30s. Second half, a little bit different. They shot 56 plus percent. Defensively, a little bit of a letdown, but you had the lead throughout. Yeah, disappointing. Like I said, I thought we came out really focused at the beginning, uh, got up by 20, and you know had a long talk with the guys at halftime about not being satisfied. Let's win 20 in the second half. Let's try to build some momentum, and we just didn't do that. Uh, played, you know, really lackadaisical defense on uh, on the second half, and we allowed them uh, to kind of stay around in the game. But as I said. Uh, the most important thing for us was to get a win. Right, and Alessandro Labor, career tying 25 points in the game. Uh, he certainly was there offensively. Yeah, I should have had 30. I mean, he, uh, <laughs> it never happened. No, well, I mean, he's just got to keep pushing himself. He missed a lot of uh, easy layoffs and things like that. But again, he played well, uh, did what we had to do. So I was happy with the whole performance. I thought Mikey uh, got got better again as, as the game went on. So uh, every game, he seems like he's getting more comfortable. Yeah, I was going to mention Mikey Dixon now, 17 points. His best performance as a lope coming in, do you feel like maybe you've got a, a, a three-pronged attack as far yeah, as Yeah, I, I think Mikey now is, is understanding that he does. He knows when to shoot. He's not hesitating like he did before. He's getting more confident. Um, he's starting to get his legs as far as game shape. So uh, as he continues to play, he's going to get better and better. It's got to feel good for the guys with a, just getting a win, regardless of what, whatever happened in the game. Just put one in the win column, and hopefully that momentum carried over into KC. Yeah, we were disappointed. You know, we were up at the Bakersfield and then Baptist. We just really struggled to score. But uh, to go on the road and get that win, uh, I thought our guys uh, – uh, took a little load off the shoulders. You mentioned the travel. Wow, that was crazy up there. The weather in Chicago, you had to spend the night. The ca flight was canceled. You ended up going into St. Louis and then busing from St. Louis to Kansas City. That had to take a toll on the Well, it, it was it was you know different because not everybody went on that first flight. We could only get a number of tickets. So myself and, and Rafe and, and Lorenzo actually stayed until Sunday morning. The other guys got on the flight, uh, flew to St. Louis, and had a four and a half hour bus ride there. They got in about 2.30, 3 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, the rest of us arrived Sunday morning about 9 o'clock, and then we had the game at 4. So you never know how that's going to uh, to materialize, but I thought our guys came out. We knew the first four minutes were going to be important because UMKC had lost uh, three games in a row. They were a desperate team, and I thought we handled it really well. Yeah, you mentioned one guy's name, Rafe. Uh, he, he got some minutes this weekend. Rafe had some great practices, and uh, as I told our guys, he deserved to play. So I thought the Chicago came and had three assists in four minutes. Uh, I thought he did really well, and then uh, put him again in early against KC, played another five minutes. So if he keeps practicing and playing this way, uh, maybe his minutes will increase, but he's given us some really valuable time. And Mikey had a, a really good performance against Kansas City and really had ice water in his veins at the free throw line, six for six. Yeah, he was huge. Uh, did a really good job of, of getting going early and then uh, stepping up and making those free throws. Uh, we did a poor job of managing the clock down the stretch, fouled a little early, didn't foul, but uh, Mikey stepping up and making those six free throws were huge. So you really feel like he's, you know, these past two games that he's finding his groove? I think so. I think he's starting to understand how he has to play and what shot is his, and, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm starting to learn where I have to get him the ball and what plays work for his skill set. Carlos Johnson also uh, from that three-pronged scoring attack, he contributed mightily as well. Yeah, I thought he did a really good job, especially at UMKC. He started off uh, hot and then, you know, didn't uh, try to force things, took good shots when they were there, made a big three in the second half, but that was very efficient. So I think Carlos, uh, you know, and Mikey played great. Um, and Ali, you know, really went up against the buzzsaw. Their freshman really made a physical game for him. Uh, Ali had an okay game. 
uh, didn't play well, but I thought he did enough for us to help win. And Javon Blackshear's numbers, you know, they were okay, but the big number that stood out in that second game at KC was 10 defensive rebounds. Well, it's amazing. Uh, Javon's leading the WAC in defensive rebounds. He's leading the whole conference in defensive rebounds. He's second on our team. He's third in the league in rebounding total. So. And you didn't see that at Chatham Mountain, you said that. in the I, post. I told him when he got here, I'd never seen you get a rebound, but he's really taking that hard, especially on the defensive end. You know, our guys are trying to box out, and he's down out there rooting the ball out, so he's doing a great job. And Alessandro Labor, because of the last two games, he's the WAC player of the week for the second time. Yeah, I mean, he's the engine. Um, you know, you probably could have gave it to Mikey. Uh, like I said, I think Isaiah. I mean, uh, uh, Alessandro had a, had a poor game against UMKC, but uh, everybody knows that he's the focus point, focal point of everybody that we play against. But you said that, and, and you might not have been having that luxury to say he had a poor game and, and you won the game because how he goes, the team has been able to go. So it's well, that's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, he know. draws a lot of uh, uh, you know double teams down yeah. there. So he's doing a good job, and we're going to keep feeding the ball. So he's got to play a little bit better when guys get physical. But uh, yeah, he's you know he, he faced a lot of uh, adversity last year, and he's really stepped it up this year and, and realized that he's got to play well. Coming up, who did he idolize growing up, and what does he like to do away from the court? Our Lopes insider Paul Coro catches up with Mikey Dixon. Whether you crave the night or savor the day, here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort, play in style. GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Across the green desert, to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford, satisfaction in everything. The Dan Marley Show on Fox Sports Arizona is presented by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. And also brought to you by Cox Business. It's time for the Talking Stick Resort Play of the Week. Play in style. Dixon, they're trying to get the ball to Laver. Alec is all over it. Dixon from outside of three. Oh, my goodness. That was a big shot by Dixon right in the face. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show, presented by Talking Stick Resort. Barry Butel alongside the head coach, Dan Marley. And we've talked about uh, Mikey Dixon. He's getting into that groove. He's had a big uh, outing at Chicago State and followed up with KC. He's the transfer from St. John's. He's got to be feeling more comfortable as a lope now. Well, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, was able to come in a uh, semester, you know, last year in the second semester. So he's had about a year. Um, but it's, it's, it's no secret that it takes a while uh, when you get in the game to kind of find your game shape, to find your game legs, uh, and to find out where you fit in the team, not trying to get in and get too much and do too much early. So I think at the beginning when he first started, he was trying not to step on anybody's toes, wanted to really facilitate. 
And I told him, Mikey, you're a scorer. You gotta not take bad shots, but when the shots are there for you, you gotta take them. And the more aggressive you are, that's gonna open it up for other guys. And uh, especially these last two games, he's done a great job of picking and choosing. And as I said, made a couple big threes, made a huge three down the stretch of UMKC, and then to be able to step up and make those free throws. This might, you know, basketball might be basketball, but is there an East Coast mentality? I mean, he's, he's from Delaware, played at St. John's. You come out to the West Coast. I know he's talked about playing out here and, and feeling comfortable, but is, is basketball basketball, or is there a different style play? Uh, there's a different style. A I, yeah, a little, but I wouldn't call Mikey a, you know, East Coast is a more a tougher. Right. Um, you know, West Coast has a, a little bit of a reputation of being soft, outside game, and I would say that Mikey uh, is definitely a guy who can shoot it, but he likes to mix it up and try to drive the lane. I think for the most part, he should probably stay outside, get the shot, mm -hmm. but he is so good with the basketball that he's able to create for himself. So Mikey's just a very talented and confident scorer, and I don't think you can put him in a box as far as how he can play. And he's starting to figure out when he can drive and when he's got to take the shot. Lopes insider Paul Coro has more with Lopes guard Mikey Dixon. Dixon trying to cross up over Wallace. Step back. Good for Mikey Dixon. Dixon for three. Money! Bam! Long three. Good! Mikey Dixon from three point land! What was it like uh, growing up in Delaware and what's basketball like there as a kid? Um, you know, growing up there, you know, it's a small state. Um, you know, not uh, not very many people, you know, make it too far or make it out just because of like, you know, the lack of the exposure, things like that. But um, it's something that you know I've been doing. I've been I've been playing my whole life. You know, that's that's the city and the state where I started off playing. Um, you know, so that always just holds some special special value to me. But um, you know, it's been fun. You know, I got a lot of support from you know everyone in my um, hometown. You know, so it's just it's just good. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of people backing me. Who did you like watching growing up or and looked up to? Was the guys you modeled your game after? Growing up, like yeah. watching, uh, probably I could definitely say Allen Iverson was probably like my favorite. Like as I was uh, a young kid growing up, um, I definitely watched Allen Iverson a lot. You know, that was probably he was probably the first NBA player that I like watched in person. You know, he played from the Sixers. He played on the Sixers, so that wasn't too far from my um, hometown. You know, so I would I would watch a lot of uh, a lot of him growing up, and he like kind of inspired me. I would say. That was because he was in Philly, but was it also because of size? You could kind of match up your game, yeah. small scoring guard. Yeah, everything. Like it was like you know, close by in the area. You know, I, um, his number. I just like I just like his swag with the game. Everything. Like he just he was like my inspiration and why I wanted to play. That's what I wanted to try to imitate. You know, growing up. So here you are, always being this East Coast guy. Mm -hmm. Played collegiately on the East Coast before you transferred here. What's it like to be a West Coast guy for the past year? Past year, you know, it's different. Um, um, it's different, but I've been getting I've been getting adjusted to it. You know, at the end of the day, basketball is just basketball. So um, it's, def it's definitely different for me, though. You know, I would never thought that you know I've been playing. Uh, I would end up in playing on the West Coast, but um, I'm glad I'm glad I'm here and I'm enjoying it. So it's fun. What's it like when you get in the zone? You know, because sometimes in practice you're just you're just on a roll and you're letting it launch from anywhere. Yeah, um, it's just a zone that I get in. Like once I see. Like once I see one go in, you know, I just, I just feel like the, bat, the, the basket gets wider, and I just feel like I, I could, uh, you know, I, I, could, I got a pretty good chance of making any shot that I take. Just half of it with me is just shooting it with confidence and just letting it, letting it go. And I feel like, you know, that's that's what I practice, that's what I work for, so that's what I need to do. What do you, what do you like to do on campus when you're away from basketball? Uh, regular stuff. Like I like to, uh, I like to catch the latest movies. That's one thing I say. I, I'm a movie guy. Like I like to go out to the movies though. Like you, I can watch it at home. But if like something nice come out in the theaters, I like to uh, go out catch a movie. Um, but other than that, you know, play video games, things like things of that nature. He just wrapped his 42nd year as a college head coach and lands in the top five in most victories in Division I. He's now a Hall of Famer. We sit down with Shellis Heinemann when we come back. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP, delivering water and power. We need 
needed one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! This Waste Management Phoenix Open will finally be his. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Such a phenomenal school and everything that we have available to us. Being a Christian school was something that I was really excited about, so I'm just thrilled to death to be here. You guys have got to win. You guys have got to want to get better. You guys have got to be the ones that want to, want to be competitive. You guys have got to be the ones that want to say, what does it take to win a WAC championship? And let's go win a WAC championship. Be dynamic, be creative, and just have fun with it today. It was quite a busy week for Chris Sissel, who now takes over the reins of the women's soccer program. On the men's side, he has spent 42 years at the helm of a Division I soccer program, detoured once by a trip to the MLS as head coach of FC Dallas. Five years after accepting the head coaching position at GCU, Shellis Heinemann continues to build on his accolades. This past August, he reached the 500 win mark and currently ranks fifth in victories as a Division I men's soccer coach. On Friday, he was inducted into the United Soccer Coaches Hall of Fame. Although his career continues to roll on, Shellis reflects on his head coaching journey and Hall of Fame honor. Who would have ever thought that Shellis Hyman would be a successful soccer coach? Who would have ever thought that Shellis Hyman would be inducted into the United Soccer Coaches Hall of Fame? I never did. Not something I ever thought about. And this journey for me has just been a journey of passion. And I've been so very blessed and fortunate to, to find a success and to meet so many good people in my lifetime. Yeah, I was born in uh, Macau, China, and um, my family had lived there for centuries, and uh, it's a Portuguese colony. When we came to the United States, I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I went to high school in Vandalia Butler. My earlier days in Vandalia, uh, when I was in high school, uh, English wasn't my first language, and my coaches there really influenced me, uh, being a, a hard worker, you know, giving my best and just some of the qualities that I use today as a coach. You know, when I was growing up, um, I lost my father at a young age, so those coaches were great influences on me. The first ones were my high school coaches, and I wanted to be just like them. I think that's probably a normal thing for, for people to think. You know, you see the job they were doing, you saw the effect they were having on, on young people, and I, I hope to have done that as well. Yeah, you know, I played professionally in Cincinnati Comets, and then I went to Brazil to, to be more involved in the game of soccer, to coaching courses. I did an, what they call an estagio. An estagio was, uh, they assigned me to a professional team, the Sao Paulo Futebol Clube, and I was with them for a year and a half. Came back for vacation. It was really interesting. When I came back on vacation, my college coach, Fritz Teller, said to me, you know, if you'll just stick around, I'm gonna retire in a year, and, and you could potentially be the next coach. And we decided to do that. It was probably one of the best decisions I ever made because I started coaching when I was 27 years of age at, uh, at my alma mater. And those were uh, great, great days for me and great start for me in my coaching career. You know, when I think about my, my past, I have to go back to my childhood being raised in Macau, China. And, and, the, and the word that was used was gai lo. Gai lo is a Chinese word meaning that you're a foreigner. So I never really fit in in Macau. 
Even though it was a Portuguese colony, it was a lot of Chinese. And coming to the United States, not having the language and not really having any direction at all, I was really felt very fortunate to be associated with some good people that gave me some direction. It's humbling. It's humbling because no one, again, no one goes into an association or a coaching background with an idea that I'm going to be successful. You hope you will be. You can only put in the work and then uh, the end results are the end results. But it's not just the wins and losses. It's, it's what you really feel like you're doing for the game. And I hope I've been a, a, a good role model and I hope I helped the game of soccer. When we return, our cameras open up to the students. What do they want to know about head coach Dan Marley? Our Askalope is next. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Lopes fans, the WAC tournament is rapidly approaching. Come join us for the fun and festivities March 11th through the 14th. To purchase single game tickets or an all session pass, hotel accommodations, and for all the event details, go to gculopes.com slash events. Hey Coach Marley, I was wondering what your favorite ice cream flavor was. Well, uh, Levi, that's an interesting question. I guess if I had to go, it's, it's pretty much vanilla, but uh, if you can put some pralines in there or some chocolate chip, that's fine. Anything mixed in with vanilla. But what I really love to do is, uh, as a kid growing up in Traverse City, I grew up on sausages and Mountain Dew. So uh, you can't add sausages to vanilla ice cream, but what I do is I put a big uh, thing of vanilla ice cream in a glass and I pour some Mountain Dew in there and I have a Mountain Dew float. So, Vanilla ice cream with Mountain Dew, it's, a, it's delicious, the nectar of the gods along with uh, some vanilla ice cream, but that's my go-to. Mountain Dew, the nectar of the gods. The nectar it's, of the gods. It's hilarious because I grew up in Minnesota and, and we pretty much grew up on Mountain Dew too. Now, when I tell There's you, Mountain I, Dew endorsement. I tell you, when I grew up, I grew up on sausage and Mountain Dew, good mid Midwestern kid. Up next, as we wrap the show, what's ahead for the Lopes and what to expect in their upcoming matchups when they return to GCU Arena. Feel the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. LopesTickets.com Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power. Before Jack wore a green jacket, he held an amateur trophy. Talking Stick Resort presents the Amateur Golf Championship, a luxurious stay and play event, plus a chance to win up to $7,000 in prizes, an eight day Hawaiian vacation, and a $7,000 prize pool blackjack tournament. The Talking Stick Resort Amateur Golf Championship at Talking Stick Golf Club, January 24th through 26th. Men and women sign up at talkingstickresort.com.
It's time to take a look ahead to the upcoming schedule, brought to you by Cox Business. The Lopes host a couple of conference games this week. The WAC's leading scorer, Terrell Brown, leads his Seattle Redhawks to GCU Arena on Thursday. Then on Saturday, the Lopes host the Wolverines of Utah Valley. All home games can be seen on Fox 10 Extra or streamed live at GCULopes.com. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. As uh, we look ahead now, two home games. Seattle on Thursday, Utah Valley on Saturday. Seattle comes in. They played a little tight there with New Mexico State. Terrell Brown had some 25 points in the game. He's a guy you got to keep your eyes on. Uh, very talented team. They got a lot of guys back from last year. They spread the floor. They shoot a ton of threes. Uh, up until recently, they weren't shooting a really high percentage, but they let a lot of them go. They make 10 a game, shoot about 27. Uh, get to the free throw line. Really good free throw shooting team. Like to drive you. As you mentioned, Brown's a really good player, very physical, can get to the basket. So, uh, you know, defensively, we're the number one team defensively in the league. They're the number two, our number one uh, offensive team in the league. So, uh, should be a good game. Uh, we've done enough here to get us back ourselves in the race. Now we got to come home and take care of home court. Yeah, and, and when you look at that game, it was pretty tight against New Mexico State. New Mexico State went to the line. They were 26 of 31 in the game. Well, I believe Seattle only went to the line some uh, 18 to 21 times. So. Yeah, it's going to be, it'll be a tough game. Like I said, they spread us out. Uh, we played them, you know, we had a great series last year. We beat them here. They beat us at their place in overtime. And then obviously we played them in the first round of the conference tournament and were able to beat them there. So uh, this will be another great matchup. Uh, we're excited about it. As I said, we did a great job going on the road. Now we have to come home and take care of uh, home court uh, advantage and, and be able to find a way to not only beat Seattle, but uh, to find a way to beat Utah Valley on Saturday. Yeah, Utah Valley goes to Bakersfield on Thursday. Then they come here on Saturday. First year head coach, uh, Mark Madsen, he's uh, at, the, at the helm there, I'm a former NBA player. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a good job. I haven't watched him play yet, obviously, because we're concentrating on, uh, on Seattle, but I'm sure there'll be a, a, another tough team. So uh, as I've told our guys, we're really concentrating on one game at a time, and at Seattle, we're going to have to play really well. Yeah, Utah Valley's two and three. They had a buzzer beater uh, with TJ Washington. They went at 72-70 over UTRGV. But then you got Seattle, they're three and two. With the last two victories, you're really right in the mix of things in a, in a tight race with the, in the WAC. New Mexico State's on top, but it's, it's really tight there. These two games coming up with Seattle at, uh, up ahead of you and Utah Valley right below. Well, yeah, if we, if we want to do anything, we got to win at home. I told our guys, you know, you got to go home, you got to go and you got to find a way to win road games, and we were able to do that this week. So, uh, no question, if you want to, to win this league and to be competitive, you have to win home games no matter who you're playing. Do you feel like your team's kind of starting to get it? Well, I think they're, like I said, I, I, their attitude's been great. Uh, they're really buying into defensively. We've really gotten better defensively. Like I said, we're the number one defense team in the, in the league right now. So I think our guys are, are trying to, uh, to, to establish high identity, and they really enjoy that now. So hopefully we'll be able to carry that on. And I told them the, the better defense we play is going to help our offense. And Blackshear stepping up defensively, something that you didn't see before he came here. Laver still kind of working on that defensive end of the ball, but he's certainly contributing offensively. Yeah, it'd be a stretch to say Alessandro's right. a good defensive player. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. The other guy's doing a great job. Ali just keeps scoring the basketball. But you're coaching it, and it's something from a team concept they have to buy into. Oh, and I think they have. They've been great. Like I said, we haven't gotten to where we are uh, defensively in the WAC without them really buying in. So uh, they understand that that's part of our uh, tradition, and that's our identity. So uh, they've done a good job. Well, this is the second season. You talked about that non-conference schedule being the first season. This is definitely the second season. Those two wins, you're right back into it before the uh, tournament. In, in March. Yeah, I'm excited. Like I said, I was really proud of our guys, so uh, it's just up to us to not to, to rest on those two wins and get comfortable. we got to build from there and, and find a way to win on Thursday night. All right, good luck Thursday right, and you. Saturday. Right. He's the head coach, and you've been tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.